Hello, boys and girls. I'm your Peter Pan storyteller. This is the story of the last starfighter. This is the story of gremlins. This is the story of Tron. This is the story of Raiders of the Lost Ark. This is the story of the Empire Strikes Back. You can read along with me in your book. You can follow the story along with me. Every time you hear this sound. Every time you hear this sound. Turn the pages when you hear this sound. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the computer sound like this. Let's, let's begin, let's begin now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of When You Hear This Sound, the podcast dedicated to the weird and wonderful world of read-along record books and storybook vinyl. Today's record is based on a Saturday morning cartoon about a group of mystery-solving teens, one of whom is a canine, driving around in a niche vehicle that was popular in the 1970s. No, it's not that cartoon. Today's record is 1978's Fang Face from Peter Pan Records. Fangface aired on ABC from September 9, 1978 until September 27, 1980, for a total of 32 episodes. The show was created by Joe Ruby and Ken Spears, who also created the not-coincidentally-similar Scooby-Doo Where Are You for Hanna-Barbera in 1969. After many years with Hanna-Barbera, the duo broke away and founded their own animation studio, Ruby Spears Productions, in 1977, and Fangface was their first cartoon series. Ruby Spears would go on to release some of the most beloved, but also some of the most confounding cartoons of the 1980s, like Thundar the Barbarian, Mork and Mindy, Pac-Man, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Mr. T, The Centurions, Turbo Teen, It's Punky Brewster, Rambo the Force of Freedom, and somehow made a cartoon based on the Rubik's Cube called Rubik the Amazing Cube. As for Fangface's similarity to Scooby-Doo, as the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Although there are plenty of surface comparisons to be made between the two shows, Fangface wasn't exactly like its predecessor. The premise is laid out in the show's opening monologue. Fang face! Every 400 years, a baby werewolf is born into the Fangsworth family. And so, when the moon shined on little Sherman Fangsworth, he changed into Fang face! The werewolf! Only the sun can change him back to normal. And so Little Fangs grew up and teamed up with three daring teenagers, Kim, Biff, and Pugsy. And together they find danger, excitement, and adventure. Sherman Fangs Fangsworth is a lanky, sleepy-looking teen who always wears a backwards red baseball cap. Whenever Fangs sees the moon, he changes into a werewolf, the titular Fangface. When he's transformed, Fangs grows in size, strength, and appetite, often trying to eat his pint-sized friend on the team, Pugsy. In wolf form, Fangs loses all of his clothes except for the backwards baseball cap, and also grows a single large fang in the middle of his upper jaw. What the intro doesn't tell you is that Fangs changes into Fangface whenever he sees any representation of the moon. It can be the actual moon in the sky, it can be a drawing of the moon, or it can even be a moon-like object like the crescent-shaped door handles on a spooky mansion in one episode. And to change him back into fangs, he must see some representation of the sun, be it the real thing, a drawing, or even a statue that resembles the sun. This ability is often used to the gang's advantage. For example, someone in the group might show fangs a picture of the moon if they need fangface's strength or blind courage in the face of danger. But once fangface isn't needed anymore, they can just show him a drawing of the sun, and he'll revert back to human form again. Of course, there are also plenty of times in the show where fangs will change at the least opportune moment, simply because he accidentally saw a picture of the moon or the sun. In both human and wolf form, Fangs was voiced by Frank Welker, who voiced Fred from the original Scooby-Doo series, but is also known for playing Megatron from Transformers. His filmography is way too long to list here, but if it's animated and was produced after 1969, Welker probably played a voice in it. In both forms, Fangs is known for excitedly saying, ooh, ooh, before expressing an idea. This vocal tick was inspired by comedian Joe Ross, who used it as his catchphrase on the Phil Silvers show in the 1950s. Along with Fangs, there are three other mystery-solving teens riding around in the wolf buggy dune buggy. First, we have Biff, the leader of the gang, voiced by Jerry Dexter, who worked with Ruby and Spears on quite a few shows at Hanna-Barbera. While Dexter had a long career in both animation and live action, spanning from the early 1960s until the late 80s, he never really had a starring role. 
His filmography shows a lot of sidekicks, additional voices credits, and single episodes of TV shows like McHale's Navy, Gomer Pyle USMC, and Dragnet 1967. Biff is kind of a generic, good-looking leader, kind of like Fred from Scooby-Doo, minus his penchant for amazing ascots. The brains of the operation and the lone woman in the gang was Kim, voiced by Susan Blue, a prolific voice actor with credits ranging from DuckTales to G.I. Joe to My Little Pony and The Simpsons. However, she's best known for playing the female Transformer from the 1980s, R.C. Kim is drawn in an unusual style from the rest of the gang. Her skin tone is darker than the otherwise all-Caucasian crew, but she's not an outwardly black character like Valerie from Josie and the Pussycats either. Her specific race isn't important to the character in the context of the show, but it does seem to at least be an attempt by Ruby Spears to add a little diversity to the Saturday morning landscape. Granted, she's still voiced by a white actress, so it's not like they were doing a lot for minority representation, but it is an interesting side note for the show. The shorter-than-average wannabe tough guy sidekick that Fangface always tries to eat is Pugsy, voiced by Bart Braverman, best known for starring as Bobby Binzer Borso on the TV series Vegas that ran from 1978 until 1981. Pugsy's comedy gag is that he always tries to sound smart by using $5 words, but then screws up the pronunciation. Fangface didn't goof! He accidentally found a secret door out of here! Come on, let's go! <laughs> Nothing to it. Fankface debuted as a half-hour standalone cartoon for the first season of 16 episodes. However, for the second season, the episodes were shortened to 15 minutes and aired as part of the Ruby Spears Plastic Man comedy adventure show that ran from 1979 until 1981. The Plastic Man Show is an anthology cartoon series featuring DC Comics' Plastic Man superhero and his similarly stretchy family. Over the course of its two-year run, the Plastic Man cartoons were accompanied by a variety of recurring animated shorts, also produced by Ruby Spears. One of the more unusual cartoons on the show was Mighty Man and Yuck, a show about a tiny superhero whose giant sidekick is a dog so ugly he wears a doghouse on his head. At least once per episode, Yuck would need to remove his doghouse mask to scare a villain always with his back strategically facing the audience so kids had to use their imagination instead of seeing just how ugly he really was. Another segment was Rickety Rocket, about a group of African-American kids in the future who build a talking rocket ship out of spare parts they found in the junkyard and then set themselves up as a detective agency. The show did have a mostly black cast, so there is something to be said about that, but I'm not sure it would make it to the air today without a few PC adjustments. I'll put links to these shows on YouTube in the show notes so that you can check them out. Not only was Fangface shorter when it made the move to the Plastic Man show, it also got retooled with a new, younger cast member. Following in the footsteps of classic Jump the Shark editions like Cousin Oliver on The Brady Bunch and Chrissy on Growing Pains, this new character, Baby Fangs, aka Fangpuss, became a focal point of the show. In fact, the name of the show was changed from just Fangface to Fangface and Fangpuss. Baby Fangs was Sherman's cousin who, for some unknown reason, suddenly joined the teenagers on their adventures. Dressed in nothing but a diaper and a red ball cap, Baby Fangs was cursed with the same affliction as his cousin. Anytime he saw any representation of the moon, he would turn into the baby werewolf Fangpuss. Also like his cousin, he kept his backwards baseball cap, he grew a single fang, but he kept his droopy diaper. As any scarred member of Generation X will tell you, Fangpuss is to Fangface as Scrappy-Doo is to Scooby-Doo. Scrappy was introduced to the Mystery Gang in 1979 when ABC threatened to pull the third Scooby-Doo series, The Scooby-Doo Show, from its Saturday morning lineup and replace it with a pilot show from their new competition, Ruby Spears. But when Hanna-Barbera presented Scrappy to the network, ABC liked what they saw and chose to retool the entire concept around Scrappy, calling the new show Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. And Scrappy did help gain back a large portion of Scooby's lost viewership. Scrappy became so popular that Hanna-Barbera dropped Velma, Daphne, and Fred from the second season of the show so it could focus exclusively on the misadventures of Scrappy, his Uncle Scooby, and their best friend, stoner kid Shaggy. So when Ruby Spears saw Fangface's ratings take a hit during the debut season of the show, they borrowed a page from their former employer's handbook and introduced a younger, spunkier version of the most popular character to try to spice things up. Unfortunately, Fangpuss didn't do for Fangface what Scrappy did for Scooby. Fangface and Fangpuss only lasted one season on the Plastic Man show, a total of 16 segments, before being replaced with other Ruby Spears productions like Thundar the Barbarian and Heathcliff and Dingbat. Hey, we must have made a wrong turn a ways back. This isn't the way to camp. Ooh, ooh, no problem. I'm an expert at navigating by the stars. You just follow these four little twinkly ones, then turn right and go all the way over to the big bright. Yikes! 
This is where I get out. <laughs> Do you see Pug's fang puss? <laughs> Do you? Huh? Huh? <laughs> For a show that was shuffled around like this, you would think it just never caught on. But you might be surprised to know that the show did very well at first. In an industry magazine advertisement from the show's distributor Viacom, Fangface is seen to boast 8.7 million viewers, totaling 37% of the viewing audience for its time slot. I'm not sure how long those ratings held, but it was long enough to convince companies to license Fangface for tie-in merchandise. The legion of Fangface fans could buy a Fangface board game from Parker Brothers. They could read the further adventures of Fangface and company in two titles from Tempo Books. They could dress up in a plastic fang face mask for Halloween thanks to Collegeville. Fans could relive the show on three Viewmaster reels, and in what has become the rarest of all fang face merchandise, they could cuddle up at night with their very own buck-toothed werewolf stuffed animal. There were two VHS releases of the show, one in 1983 that featured three episodes, and another in 1986 that contained another two episodes. The show was never formally released on DVD, though bootlegs are available. Or you can just head over to YouTube and check out the Sherman Fangsworth channel where every episode is online. I'll put a link to the channel in the show notes. In addition, as recently as 2011, Fangface was broadcast on the nostalgia-based cartoon television channel, Boomerang. Of course, the tie-in merchandise we're interested in on When You Hear This Sound is Fangface from Peter Pan Records, released in 1978. As you might recall from previous episodes of this podcast, Peter Pan Records was one of the premier production houses for kids' records. They made records of everything that kids loved in the 70s and 80s, like the Flintstones, Bugs Bunny, Scooby-Doo, Spider-Man, Wonder Woman, The Incredible Hulk, The Six Million Dollar Man, Planet of the Apes, and Star Trek. I featured Peter Pan records including Conan the Barbarian, Batman, Superman, and Kojak, so go check those episodes out if you haven't already. The Fangface album is made up of four original stories. Side A, featuring the stories Mirage, or Freak Out in the Fun House, and Ghost of the High Sierras, or The Yammering Yo-Yo of Yosemite, was produced by Arthur Korb, who made quite a few of the most beloved kids' records for Peter Pan in the 1970s. Side B, produced by Peter Bryant, features The Stowaway and Super Frog. Peter Pan was based out of New Jersey, so they didn't have easy access to the Los Angeles-based actors that originally voiced the characters on the show. However, they found actors that filled the roles nicely. The actor who plays Fangs especially does a great job capturing Welker's ooh-ooh from the show. Unfortunately, like almost all kids' records, these actors don't get proper credit for their performances. Right. And with the help of our werewolves, those prehysterical werewolves don't have a chance. Ooh, ooh. Come on, Fingpuss. If we let pugs get away, we'll be the laughing stock of the werewolf community. Let's get him. Yikes! Help! Get me out of here, you ignopotamuses! So we can catch a fight of bad guys before they disappear. Looking back, I can't say that Fangface was a good cartoon. In fact, it was pretty terrible. But despite the similarities to Scooby-Doo, the show did have an original concept, that's for sure. And it helped kick off two decades of Ruby Spears productions before the company was folded into Time Warner Entertainment, just like the other cartoon powerhouse of the day, Hanna-Barbera. While it never reached the heights of popularity of other Ruby Spears shows like Alvin and the Chipmunks, Punky Brewster, or Thundar the Barbarian, Fangface is a quirky little blip in pop culture that's worth a look. And with that, let's go to the record. We'll start with Ghost of the High Sierras, featuring two werewolves for the price of one, and then Stowaway, where Fangface takes on a Yeti. Enjoy, and ooh ooh, be sure to subscribe to When You Hear This Sound, so you won't miss our further adventures into the weird and wonderful world of read-along record books and storybook vinyl. Yosemite National Park. Wow, it's beautiful. Hey, Fangs, look at those trees. They're enormous. Ooh, ooh, look at the one straight ahead. There's a hole in it so big we could drive right through it. That's got to be the biggest tree in the whole wide universe area. Right, Bugsy. Those giant redwoods are the biggest species of trees in the world. I can't wait till I see all the waterfalls and wonderful rock formations like El Capitan and Half Dome. And the rest of the great Sierra Nevadas. Look over there, that waterfall. That must be Bridal Veil. Let's stop and look at it. Good idea, Kim. I'll park the wolf buggy over here. It's so beautiful. I 
I'm glad we got here before dark. What a great place to take a shower bath. If you tried that, the only shower you'd get would be in jail, dummy. I was just... Ooh, ooh, what's that at the top? A strange light, and it's someone or something. Bathed in an eerie light, there at the top of Bridal Vale stood a ghostly apparition, a huge creature, half wolf, half man, its long, sharp teeth flashing in the twilight as wild howls and half crazy screams pour down in a torrent of rage over the petrified crowd below. from outer space. It's the devil himself. Let me out of here. In moments, the terrified tourists had disappeared in one mad rush, leaving only Fangs, Pugsy, Biff, and Kim at the base of the waterfall. Ooh, ooh, I think we'd better get out of here, too. For once, Fangs, I think I got to agree with you. Let's go. Wait a minute. There's something fishy about all this. Look, the light up there. It's fading. And the creature or, or ghost or whatever it is has disappeared. What do you make of it, Biff? I don't know, Kim, but I'd sure like to find out. Later that evening, they are talking to a couple of park rangers about what they had just witnessed. And you say the creature has been sighted in different places in the Sierra Nevadas? Uh, yes, we've had quite a few reports of a wild creature appearing suddenly out of nowhere in the more remote parts of the mountains, scaring the wits out of people. Oh, they're calling it the ghost of the high Sierras. With all that crazy yipping, yapping, and yelling, I think they should call it the yammering yo-yo of Yosemite. That's good, Pugsy. I like it, I like it. The, the yammering yo-yo of Yosemite. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Yeah, this is the first time it's been seen here in the busiest part of the valley. And at the height of the tourist season. Almost like somebody wanted to scare everybody away. But why, Biff? That's what I'd like to find out. Oh, look, the moon's coming up. The moon! The moon? Oh, no! At the sight of the moon, our lovable Sherman Fangsworth, whom we know as Fangs, always turns into Fangface, a weird and wacky werewolf. And tonight is no exception. Oh! <laughs> oh! I want to eat something, <laughs> or somebody. <laughs> and the rangers, not knowing he really isn't as bad as he looks or sounds, see the situation rather differently. Look, it's the monster. The wolf man of Bridal Vale. The ghost of the High Sierras. Hey, you, you're under arrest. <laughs> Who, me? Ooh, ooh, ain't nobody arresting me. You don't understand. He's not... Out of my way, lady, or you'll be under arrest, too, for obstructing justice. Hey, where did he go? I don't know. He disappeared as fast as he did this afternoon. We'll never find him in the dark. He probably knows the country better than we do. Don't worry. Now we know what he really looks like, and we'll get him in the morning. What the rangers didn't know was that Fangface would hide in such an obvious place as the wolf buggy, where his friends find him a little later, crouched down in the back seat. Now we've got to catch the real monster to prove Fangface is innocent. Yeah, <laughs> got to prove I'm innocent. We can start right now by picking up its trail at the top of Bridal Vale. The moon will be up full soon, and we'll have enough light to follow it. Biff was right. Fangface picked up the scent of the creature and led the gang deeper and deeper into the high country of the Great Mountain Range, following its trail from one peak to another. Look at them footprints. He's heading that way. Ooh, ooh, wait till I get my hands on that yo-yo. I'll fix him. Ah, la, la, la. I'll tear him limb from limb. Ah, I'll massacre him. Ah, la, la. I'll, I'll, I'll. Yeah, go get him, Fangface. All through the night, the hunt went on, till suddenly, at the first light of dawn, they find themselves at the entrance of an old abandoned mine. The trail ends here. The creature must have gone in there. Right. This has got to be its hideout. <laughs> No, he got him trapped. And I'm going to go right in there and... Ooh, ooh, ah. well, wait a minute, Fangface. We better be careful. We don't know what's in there. We don't want to walk into a trap. Yeah, don't want to walk into no trap. Now, follow me, everybody. Slow and easy and be very quiet. I can hardly see in here. This tunnel seems to end just up ahead. No, it, it turns and leads into a bigger one. And look, way down there. A light! Hey, I hear voices. Yeah, I hear voices. <laughs> and I smell a rat. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Let's move closer and see what's going on. Look, four men. Boy, do they look tough. But where's that monster? <laughs> I don't see no monster. <laughs> look, over in the corner, that costume. There's your monster, a fake werewolf. 
Look at it glow in the dark. So that's how it worked. One of these crooks must have worn it. Must have been that big one there. Whoa, he looks uglier than the monster. Shh, listen. <laughs> Did you see them chickens run when I got out there and put on my act? Yeah, the whole thing worked great. Scared all the tourists and campers out of the whole valley. Nobody but us knew there was a fortune in gold in this old mine. Now all we gotta do is load it onto the truck and drive it out of here with nobody in our way. Okay, let's get moving. Look, there's another entrance. And I can see the truck sitting right there. They've got it almost loaded. How are we gonna stop them? Yeah, they're way bigger than we are. I got an idea. Thank face, you go back the way we came in and run around to the road the truck will follow. And when the truck comes out on the road... Okay, here we go. Yeah, an easy street. Here we come. <laughs> <laughs> and as the truck started down the old narrow dirt road, suddenly right in front of it appeared a horrible sight. It was Fang Face. Look, a monster! put in the road until it was too late. Now we just tie them up like this and go get the rangers. Don't have to go far. Here come the rangers now. We heard some wild noises and a car crash. Oh, you kids again. Let's go. Hey, the werewolf, the monster. Okay, this time you won't get away. And just as the ranger was about to grab Bang Face, the sun came up and... <laughs> hey, wh wh what is this? That's right, you guessed it. Every time Fang Face sees the sun, he changes back into good old lovable fangs. And right there in front of the astonished ranger, he did it again. I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Ooh, ooh, what happened? And Biff explained the whole thing, and the rangers got the crooks, and the government got the gold, and everybody was happy, except the four crooks. Someday I'd like to come back here. There's still so much we didn't get to see. Well, there's one thing you'll never see again. What's that? The ghost of the High Sierras. junk back with him. Oh, oh, yeah, how? He packed it in a big crate and had it delivered directly to the university. Oh, boy, this is exciting, all the way from Tibet. And where is Tibet, bird brain? Gee, Pugsy, I don't know. Well, for your information, it's in Asia, smack dab in the middle of the Himalaya Mountains. That's why it's called the country at the roof of the world. Gee whiz, you know everything, Pugsy. Ah, shut up. As Fangs and his friends approached the university, a strange scene was unfolding in the basement of the Life Sciences Building. Somebody sure nailed this lid down tight. They must have thought they were making a cage for some kind of monster. Uh-oh, there she goes. Good grief, it is a monster. Help! Oh, oh. The janitor tried to escape, but the big hairy creature scooped him up in one immensely powerful arm before he was able to reach the door. <laughs> right this way. I see the janitor already opened the crate. Oh, oh, I wonder what's in there. <gasps> oh. What's wrong, Professor? My artifacts, my pottery and jewelry, all broken. What a shame. How'd it happen? I don't know. There's a funny smell around here. Yeah, a, a funny smell, real funny. And look, the door's open. Yeah, that's strange. Come on, Fangs, let's take a look outside. Gee, Professor, you must feel awful. It's a whole year's work down the drain. Holy crow. Professor, Professor. Oh, you won't believe 
what we found. What? Giant footprints. They look human, but they're much bigger than any human foot I ever saw. Hold on. It must be the abominable snowman. The who? The abominable snowman, sometimes called the Yeti, is a hairy man-like creature that roams through the Himalayas. Although Yetis rarely attack people, they are widely feared by the Tibetans. Somehow, for some unknown reason, a Yeti must have climbed into this crate when my native guard wasn't looking. Then the guard nailed down the lid without seeing what was inside. If there was an abominable snowman in that box, he must have attacked the janitor, and he's probably still lurking nearby. Kim, I think it's time we showed our friend a picture of the moon. Uh, just one minute. I'm getting in this box so that crazy werewolf can't go after me like he always does. Okay, go ahead. Whenever he sees the moon, our lovable Sherman Fangsworth, whom we know as Fangs, always turns into Fangface, the wacky werewolf. And tonight was no exception. <laughs> Where is he? Where's Pugsy? <laughs> Help! Get me out of here! I'll get you out! <laughs> Will you stop it? You don't want to eat me, you want to find the abominable snowman! That's right, Fangface! <laughs> All right! Just let me at him! Let's go have a look at those footprints! Fangs and his gang followed the monster's tracks until they came to a rocky area. On the other side of the rocks, they plunged into the woods, hoping to pick up the trail again. <laughs> Boy, these woods are scary at night. Never fear, Fang Face is here. Yeah, that's right, Pugsy. Hey, there's the monster up in that tree. Just let me at him. Hold it, hold it, Fang Face. That's not a monster, it's a man. It must be the janitor. Hey, you up there. Who's that? Oh, no, it's the monster. No, it isn't. We're friends. Come on down. No, on your right. As long as he's down there, I'm staying right where I right am. Okay, Fangface, go get him. I'll get him. You just watch me. <laughs> good work, Fangs. Please don't hurt me. I'll be good. You're coming back with us to see Professor Voigt. We better hurry. The sun is about to come up. Here it comes. Bye-bye, Fangface. <laughs> and hello, Fang. Well, what's going on? Well, you see, every time Fangface here sees the sun, he turns back into our friend Fangs. Nothing to worry about. Hey, where am I? Come on, we're all going to the professor's house. When they got to his house, Professor Voigt was already up. He was inspecting the contents of the crate which he had brought home with him from the university. After hearing the janitor's description of the monster that had attacked him, the professor realized that his hunch had been correct. It was the abominable snowman and no other. He let the janitor go, made sure that all the doors and windows were locked, and awaited the attack that he was sure would come soon. The question is, what was he doing in the crate to begin with? I'm not sure, but I have a theory. You see, the Yeti, or Abominable Snowman, is supposed to guard the holy places in the mountains. Now, suppose I disturbed one of those places while I was searching for ancient artifacts. The Yeti would come after me, and he wouldn't rest until he had gotten his revenge. So, the Abominable Snowman is only after you? That's my guess. What are we waiting for? Let's get out of here. No, stupid. We have to help the professor. How come? Because he's our friend. Ooh, ooh, you're right. I think we're all going to need some help. Something or someone just broke off that tree as if it were a twig. Cripes, the abominable snowman. Ooh, ooh, the snowman. He's got the tree trunk in his hands. Biff, I'm scared. Quick, the picture of the moon. Once again, crazed by the sight of the moon, Fangs turned into the weird but wonderful werewolf known as Fangface. Oh, <laughs> I'm hungry. Pugsy. Leave me alone, Muttonhead. He's using the tree as a battering ram. Go get him, Fangs. Get the abominable snowman. Let me at him. Fangface went right out through the window. The snowman sees him. He's going after him. Come on, Professor. Now's our chance. Let's get the crate out of the garage so we'll be ready. All right. <laughs> Fangface, watch out for that tree trunk. Ooh, ooh, that was too close for comfort. Hey, you, what do you think you're doing? Uh, hey, let me down. <laughs> Through Fangface clear across the yard. Get up, Fangface. He's going after the professor. 
Just let me get my hands on him. <laughs> and now, Fangface, the veritable whirlwind of fury, descends on the snowman like an avalanche. <laughs> All right, Mr. Snowman. <laughs> I guess you're going back in the box right now. <laughs> oh, Fangs, you're wonderful. Gee whiz. <laughs> what are you going to do with the abominable snowman, Professor? I'll send him back to Tibet with orders to let him go in the wilds. That's where he really belongs. Uh-oh. Fangs is looking at his reflection in the window. He'll get carried away like he always does. But instead of seeing his own reflection, Fang Face saw the sun. And whenever he sees the sun, he becomes just plain Fangs. Hey, what happened? What's going on? The abominable snowman's going back to Tibet. Ooh, ooh, that's good. Boy, am I glad he didn't come here. But he did come, Fangs. And you saved us all. Are you crazy? I don't believe a word. A single word, do you hear? Not a word. Thank <laughs> you.